Hey guys, my name is American Casty, and today I'm going to be doing like a question and answer thing as well as get ready with me. Nothing crazy, it's not like I've got any dom sessions planned or any escort sessions planned. I may go on webcam, we'll see how I feel. Um, I'm going to do kind of like a greenish look to match my hair. It's something I've done before on Instagram. And as I'm going through it, I'm just going to kind of answer a bunch of questions you guys have been asking me. Um, I didn't write down people's names, we'll keep it anonymous anyway. But I've got quite a lot, so we're just going to see how many we can get through. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to be showing what products I'm using or brushes. and It's not like I'm that good anyway. Um, and don't mind me, I'm going to be smoking throughout it and all that. If you guys have any other questions that I do not answer, feel free to message me. Okay, sorry, I'm nervous because I've never done my makeup in front of everybody, so it's weird. So one of the questions that came up a lot was what has always been a dream of mine? To be honest, I mean, I think I'm just kind of like everybody else. I would like to be be young, creative, and then kind of get all that out of the way and then raise a family. I'm quite typical. A dream of mine is to be an author, to write down everything. I would love, love, love to write a screenplay. That's probably my ultimate dream as well as make a documentary. Not so much about me, but about other people. I've always been interested in sex work, even before I decided to do it. I always found them very interesting. Um, so yeah, I would say ultimately a dream of mine is to create my own screenplay. But I have no idea how to do that, which I could probably do and figure out pretty realistically as well as travel a lot more. It's definitely another dream. Um, and again, I kept getting a lot of questions about body positivity, um, specifically tips for young girls and how to stay body positive. I know it may seem like I'm really positive and um, obviously loving my body because I'm natural, but there's tons of things that I'm self-conscious of. I've got scars all over my legs, all over my bodies from when I was, um, all over my bodies over my body from when I was young and crazy and just getting into trouble all the time. Um, you know, between the years of probably 16 to 20, I was not the best person or kid or anything, <laughs> or daughter or girlfriend, anything. So honestly, it's just learning to accept it and love it. Like I used to look at my scars and I still do. I see a lot of flaws. I see my past. Um, but sometimes you kind of have to fake it. Sometimes I have to tell myself, you know what, those scars are kind of cool. Those scars are beautiful. They're what make me me. Um, half the time I don't believe it. Half the time I do. But for, this, for the rest of my body, I mean, it's not like I'm, like, being completely different by, like, I think not shaving. I mean, to other people, they're like, whoa, how does she have the confidence to do that? But that's always how I've been when I started getting pubic hair. I remember shaving it, and I got razor burn and it itched and so bad i remember wearing jeans it was just fucking horrible and i was like i'm not gonna do this anymore how the fuck do girls do this anyway if a guy wants to fuck me he's gonna have to deal with it and if he doesn't like that then he can fuck off he's not the right one so being positive you just ha it's something you grow into it's something you learn you can't just wake up and say i love myself now um, I took therapy, you know what I mean? I was not always confident at all. I think I just stopped caring and was like, why do I care what other people think of me? Because it's my life and I only get one life to live and I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to do everything I want. Sorry, I'm a bit sick as well. <laughs> I'm going to be like wiping my nose. Um, this was a good question. Do I ever get scared? Yes, of course I get scared. Are you kidding me? I'm opening the door to strangers. Everybody else, like the people who come to see me, they really have an upper hand because they know what I look like. I don't know what they look like. Um, but yeah, I get scared all the time. That's why I have live in security. I've had to get cameras. I have a dog. Um, but you know, like I don't really keep anything at my house. I have somebody else, but anyway, da da da. But yeah, I get scared a lot, but you know, how I do it is I do have um, some self-defense tools and I also have a marker to check the bills. As soon as somebody comes in, if I don't like the way that they're vibing, I'll just tell them I'm not comfortable with doing the session. I won't keep going. Once I get the money, I go upstairs to my security. I check in. I say the guy looks really nice or he seems really nice or I don't know about him. Can you get him out? Um, I used to be a lot scareder, but now I've learned how to get around that so it's been a bit easier since I've 
learn what works. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just kind of like all scattered. So what do I hate the most? Oh, that's a good one. I have no idea. What do I hate the most? I don't really like that word hate because it implies that I have a strong feeling. I think I just don't like time wasters. I get a lot of people who call and they're like, yeah, I'm 20 minutes away and then they don't show up and I've now canceled other bookings or run home to do the booking and get ready that now all of a sudden I could have stayed out with my friends and now I'm home and I don't need to be or, um, you know, I've canceled on other clients. That's why I don't do out calls anymore because there's been one too many times where I've gotten all the way to the location and the person hasn't even been there or doesn't even answer the door. The lights are off or all of a sudden their phone's off. It's just like, fuck all that shit now. Um, so I would say I probably hate time wasters the most. And then guys who just don't really read my profile. There's a lot of girls on escort sites i'm on adult work that say like i want you to come in my ass and i want to be the filthy little slut and that's fine if that's what gets you off whatever but nowhere on my profile does it say that so when a guy calls me and is like hey what's up baby you're gonna be my little slut tonight it's like click no because you shouldn't talk to me like that you shouldn't talk to any woman like that no i don't want to fucking see you so i would say just assholes there's been a, a few times I got a weird vibe and I decided not to see that person. And I've gotten spams of text messages like, I'll find you, you whore. And it's like, well, it's a good thing I didn't see you, isn't it? Because you're clearly fucking psycho. Um, And it's just not really consistent. I could have a really good week and then I could have a really slow week. So there's never a 100% guarantee that you're going to make money at all, which is another thing that's really frustrating. Um, other than that, I fucking really don't hate anything else because I'm my own boss, so. So the next question was pros and cons of the job, and that kind of just ties into the last one. A pro definitely is being your own boss, being able to wake up whenever you want, um, but that can also be a con if you're not motivated or not inspired or lazy. There's tons of days I'm like, do I really want to work? But I kind of have to force myself because if I don't, the next day may not be busy and I might kick myself. So that's definitely a pro and a con. I would say another pro is just, well, getting to really listen to myself. I'm not just an escort, or just a dom. If I was just one of those, it might be a bit different, but I can actually listen to myself and say, you know what, I'm in a bitchy mood. Fuck escorting today. I'm going to do only dom meets or... I don't even want to do Don Meets. I just want to fuck. So it's really about feeling out, and I love that about my job. I also love the money. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the better pros. Definitely the money, but that can also be a con. I know that seems like it would be great, but I also spend it too fast. I don't really... I'm not very good with money, and I've got too many bills and stuff like that that, like, I pay, so that can be a pro and a con. I think most things are both pros and cons. <sighs> con, a lot of people around you may not want to be associated with you because of what you do. They may not want to take photos together and have you tag them, or they may not want to be in things or projects. Like, I come up with all these cool ideas I want to do, and people are like, uh, I can't exactly do that because I don't want my name on that, which I understand, and that's fine, but that's very frustrating. So I'm really trying to reach out and meet more girls and more people who are just interested in being like creative and stuff like that. Sorry, I totally now spaced on what I was fucking doing with my face. But just so you guys know too, I'm also using the Kat Von D Mavita Loca palette. Sorry, my camera fucking sucks. Um, yeah. Um, Scariest, most challenging being in the sex industry. What's the scariest, most challenging thing that's been since I've been in the sex industry? I think the scariest is just kind of not knowing who you're going to meet or what the person's going to be like. Um, that's really scary a lot of the times. Most challenging is just days where you don't make money. I've had to travel now to go make money. Um... I have been really blessed. I haven't had anything 
scary or life-threatening happened to me, but I know a lot of girls who have a lot, and a lot of it's really scary and horror stories, and my last roommate had some really horrible things happen to her. I listen to my intuition, so even if a guy's on his way with a thousand pounds in cash, and all of a sudden I get a weird gut feeling, I'll call him and say, sorry, you're gonna have to turn around, I can't see you. It doesn't matter the money, it doesn't matter anything about that, all that matters is like my intuition. So I kind of think because I've listened to that, maybe, but it's only probably, you know what I mean? It's just, you have to be really smart about who you have around you, what friends you let into your life. Like, I have people watching over my back, kind of, you know what I mean? So it's a bit easier. But I have known a lot of girls. I mean, I've been in some situations where I've asked the guy to leave and he didn't want to leave. But I've just ran up and got my security. But before I had security, I had this one guy. He showed up. I'm pretty sure he was off his meds um, or a bit mm, off. And he, like, kept reaching for things. And, like, we were, like, having sex. And he went like this on my neck. And I, like, had to take his hand and be like, no, I'm not into that. But then he just did it again. And I had to, like, actually sit up and be like, all right, I'm a bit uncomfortable now. Like, could you... We're gonna have to leave and I gave him half of his money back and I told him to leave I just wasn't comfortable doing it anymore it's really learning about how, having to have a voice in the beginning it was hard to tell somebody to leave who the fuck am I but what you have to remember is this is my job I'm my own boss and it's the same thing when somebody walks in and they don't hand me the money right away that's technically like a person who pays me so if your boss was holding his pay your paycheck you'd be like give me my fucking paycheck it's mine it's the same thing but I had to constantly remind myself I'm entitled to demand, I'm entitled to speak the way I want because this is my line of work and I'm actually the boss right now. So that's been really challenging as well, like learning how to stand up for myself and tell somebody, I don't want you doing that to me or I want you to leave. Um, in the beginning, I didn't think I really had a choice and then I realized everybody has a choice, we all do. And I think that's actually worked to my benefit because I only do things I really enjoy. So people can tell that I'm enjoying them and they're not like, does this girl even want to fucking be here? You can actually tell I'm really into what I'm doing. Like, I don't even do things sexually that I'm not into. Fuck that. What the fuck's the point of that? Um, have I always known I would be comfortable in the line of work? Or did I have to think a lot before considering getting into the sex industry? I actually didn't really think it through. I kind of just did it. Um, and then I told my parents the same day, pretty much. And um, I, I definitely didn't know. Are you kidding me? No fucking way. I don't think if you told me I was going to be doing this, I would believe you. Because, I mean, think about all the media we watch. It's like strippers being found dead or hookers being found dead in like a, like a fucking alley. And think that's kind of what I grew up and I always thought the guys that girls would be seeing were crazy psychos, psychopaths, why the fuck would you want to see that guy? And then when I first did it I realized they were normal people like you and me. Um, so I didn't really consider it too much just because I grew up kind of in a more open environment so I didn't really think it was something to be like embarrassed about. Plus I have no fucking shame. <laughs> it's actually a bad thing. I need some more shame in my life. Um, this one I like too. Okay, so this question says, do you have a favorite way to make money? Like escorting, doming, or camming? And I would say, yeah, I do. Uh, my favorite way to make money is both doming and, cam and escorting. Camming is kind of like if I just want to be in a more chill zone. I don't really make as much money on camming. So... If I had to choose between escorting and doming, probably doming, just because sex can be a lot more like mm, the same such scenario, the same positions every time, whereas doming, I get a lot more people with like crazy scenarios and fantasies, and it's a lot more exciting being able to like act all that out and just kind of explore my own inner bitch, I guess, is the best way to say it. So yeah, I think doming would have the best... If I had to only do it, I best I think that would have the most variety of actions I could do. I have people with crazy, um, you know what I mean, like 
they really, I've had people send me scripts, um, so that when I, when they walked in, I was just on a script to what I was to say, how I was to act, because they had a specific fantasy in mind, and I love when people do that, why the fuck not, you're paying so much money to go see a girl, you should go above and beyond, you should do everything you want, and it makes it more fun for me, I'm doing something new that I've never done before, it's exciting, yeah, so I would say doming, but at the same time, I really like escorting, like, I don't know, it's, it's, they're very different things, I would say, so I have no idea what I'm doing with my makeup, that's why I would never do makeup tutorials yet, uh, pro sorry if I'm just, like, totally not answering these questions the right way, um, how did I find out and decide to take Ibogaine, which is also known as a boga, and have I ever had ayahuasca? I have had ayahuasca when I was in Mexico. I went to a ceremony. It was too intense. I don't recommend it or anybody. It was probably the most intense thing I've ever done in my life. I totally thought I could handle it. And it was really long and really intense. Um, I found out about Ibogaine through actually one of my parents' friends who had heard about the medicine and kind of was just going down to do it themselves. And then, like, my parents were telling me about it and I just started, like, looking up about it. And I thought it was very cool, but unrealistic. And it wasn't until a year after I heard about it that I said, you know what, I want to go do this. And I talked to one of the providers down there and she just loved the way I sound. And she kind of arranged the whole thing. And I paid a small, like, you know, cash. I paid a small amount of money. And then I went down there for the treatment. I had to get testing, heart testing, psychological evaluations, everything. And then I did over the time about seven flood doses of Ibogaine. Um, it was a little nerve, you know, nervous when I was thinking, fuck, I have to do all these tests just to take this drug, but I watched a lot of documentaries about it, and it seemed to have some amazing effects, and I was kind of looking for that. Um, the actual reason why I took it is, an act is a little personal for me. It's something I'm going to share about when I'm out of this industry, but I'm not comfortable sharing about it just yet. So... <laughs> I'll have to wait for that one because it's a little personal but I highly recommend I begin but don't do it on your own you have to do it with a provider don't order it online or anything because a lot of bad things can happen if you do it that way and I've met kids who have done it that way and it's not the best situation I have no idea what I'm doing right now Okay. What are my feelings on a day where I don't make any or enough money? And how do I cope with knowing I may not earn any money every day? Or I may not earn every day. Which is kind of what I was talking about before. I really like this. It's very stressful. It's very hard not to take it personally. If you go to work, let's say you you sell you sell makeup, right? For just because I'm wearing makeup. You sell makeup and you work on commission. You go to work. Not many people come into the shop. You go home, you're like, whatever, it was a shit day. It wasn't really my fault. Tomorrow will be better. For me, I went to work and I sold myself and I didn't make money. So it's very hard not to internalize that and say, what's wrong with me? Other girls made money today, so what did I do wrong? Why didn't they like me? What, did, what should I do differently? And you get really in your head. And it can be really hard to get, not to get so down. Camming is probably the worst thing psychologically because I've been on for seven hours and didn't make a dime. And that's very frustrating. It's, it's demoralizing. It's so hard not to take that personally, but I really have to remember, it's not me, it's them. Like, they may not have the money. I do have days that are good, so it's not me. Um, so what I have to end up doing is really try and save and try and understand that I may not make money today and not take it personally. Um, it just seems like it sucks because whenever I want to take a day off, that's when I get tons of calls. And then when I'm actually working, it's like, where the fuck are all these calls now? Um, so it's extremely frustrating. That's why when all these girls are like, I'm trying to start into the industry, what do you recommend? I don't recommend getting into the industry. It's really hard. And it's taken me three years to get to where I am now. I did do a lot of things in the beginning I didn't want to do at all. Um... 
Ooh, the smoke's in the weed. It's getting too deep. Um, sorry that this video is gonna be like so long. So yeah, it does suck when I don't make money, definitely. But you, I like in the beginning I did take it personally. Now I don't. If I really need to make money, I'll just put an offer on, or I'll lower my prices, or alter my profile, edit it. Anything's marketing wise that are gonna make people go to you. So I've learned little tricks like that. Okay. Next page. What was it like living in a psychedelic community? It's fucking awesome. They were a little tight. They were already were really tightly knit when I got there, so it, I did feel a bit intrusive. Like, who am I to just show up? But um, we were right on the beach. Um, every day we would all meet on the beach at sunset and watch the sunset together. It was a group of like twenty of us in this community. Uh, one person like made fresh juice every day. One person would make tons of food. We just had really interesting people. One person was a chemist that made LSD, our own LSD. It was a totally different environment. I went down there for therapeutic reasons and I was used to being in therapy with like medication, like real pills. And all of a sudden I'd be like, I don't know, I'm just feeling like I'm having an off day. And they'd be like, take some, take some marijuana, take some ayahuasca, take some ibogaine, open your mind, expand it. And it really helped. I've, I've been totally different ever since. So I think I really needed that and I wouldn't take back that experience for anything um i left because it was too hot down there in mexico and i was getting eaten alive by bugs but they're all still down there and so if anybody ever wants to do ibogaine hit me up and i'll definitely refer you to a very professional person Ooh, what did i want to be growing up when I was really young, I wanted to be a doctor, actually. I've always wanted to help people in some way or another. So, yeah, when I was younger, I definitely wanted to be a doctor. Um, and then I think I really quickly realized I didn't like blood. <laughs> after that, I wanted to be a teacher. And then after that, I wanted to be a psychologist. And then I realized I didn't want to work in a hospital setting for the rest of my life. Like, you know, with, like, fluorescent lights and, like, very rarely no windows. Then I wanted to work with sexually abused children. I had a lot of things. I even started going to school for that. And then um, now I just kind of want to write. I really kind of want to have more of a chill life and just write a few things. Plus, I really like writing. It's just I always have writer's block, it seems like, which isn't the best for someone who wants to write. <laughs> Um, in the past, I have mentioned how I like to plan my LSD trips, and someone asked, how do I do that? So I've learned that from being in the psychedelic community. You know, I always just used to take drugs and put them in my mouth, because that was what you're supposed to do. But I remember one of the first times they handed me, I began, I was just going to go put it in my mouth. And they were like, whoa, 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 hold it. Look at that. That's a plant. That's a real plant. And I remember it sounds so cheesy, but I remember holding it, and they asked me to say my intentions, and I said, please, like, give me this, show me light, show me love, help me love myself. I want to leave this behind and I want to gain this. Can you help me this? Like, I, I have faith and I trust that you will show me what I'm meant to be shown. And it, I don't know, something went different in that trip. So ever since I've actually done that with all hallucinogens, um, help them put my intentions into it. Not just verbally, I've written it down, my intentions for my trip. I've pulled tarot cards. And then if my trip starts going bad, I'll read that. And I kind of have an inner conversation with myself. But psychedelics are definitely not for everybody because I've done them with people like for their first time. Um, and I've seen people freak out and uh, tried to calm them down. But there's only so much you can do. So yeah, I would say tarot cards are a really good way to um, plan. I feel like I'm like just answering questions and not really doing my makeup. All right, hold on, cause I gotta see how this is looking. Hmm. Is that okay? You guys are probably gonna think I'm crazy after watching this. Um, how do friends and family take my work today? They've asked. So in the past, it wasn't always the best thing. 
today I think that they've seen the benefits a lot more. So in the beginning I was just talking about benefits, whereas now I've actually done them and I'm able to help if they need help. Or when I went home this summer, I hadn't seen my parents in like about two years just from traveling and they have their own life. I have my own life. So being back home, I think it was really interesting because my mom was very curious, but when I would start to talk about it, she'd be like, ah, I don't want to hear all that. But towards the end, she'd actually be more interested. And um, I don't want to go into it too much because it's very personal and that's her life, not mine. But uh, we had some really conversations that I've always wanted to have. And I don't know, it was really, really touching. And when it comes to my friends, I only choose the people who are okay with it. I wouldn't really be friends with somebody who weren't, who wasn't okay with it. Um, but yeah, I think more so like my father and my brother, that's been the people I don't really talk about it. Like they know, but we don't like have a full on fucking discussion about it every day. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, obviously my friends take it a lot better than my family did. Um, but like they, my family was never like, we're not going to talk to you anymore. What the fuck? They kind of respect it in my own decision. I decided to tell them right as I began escorting um, out of fear of being blackmailed and thank god I did because I had a, a sugar daddy who kind of went a bit too insane and he contacted both my parents but I guess I'd logged in on his computer and he went crazy and found their emails and emailed them with my escort ad um, like you know with the link to my escort ad and was like what are you doing? Like, what type of parents are you? Do you not know what your daughter is up to? Yada, yada, yada. And my mom responded by saying, yeah, of course we know what she's doing. She's a grown woman. She can do whatever she wants. What are we supposed to do? Pull her out by her ear. And he was shocked by the response. I don't, I think he didn't think that they knew at all. So it was a really good thing that I told them because that was exactly what I kind of thought was going to happen. And it happened a lot sooner than I thought. Um, but, you know, a lot of other escorts will blur their face. I don't. I show everything. I show my tattoos. So I had to tell them. It was only a matter of time before they found out. Um, but, yeah, I don't talk about it really with the male parts of the family. And I don't think, you know, you ever really would. Not, like, in detail like I do, you know, with my mom. <laughs> but she's really cute. She'll send me really cute lingerie. She's always like, oh, I thought of you. Or I've really opened up her mind to what that industry actually is like because I thought it was a completely different thing I thought there were weirdos and perverts and there are but the guys I meet aren't they're very sweet guys who if I called some of them if I called right now and I was in trouble or I needed help or needed to get a flight they would help me and I can't even say that about some of my friends so I don't know there's people that I will always cherish for the rest of my life that I've met through this industry I want them at my wedding if I do get married, and I'm not even lying to you, I'd be like, you're at my fucking wedding, you're gonna be there. <laughs> um, this one says, have I done any dom meets with heterosexual couples? And if I have, what is my experience? And what do I prefer and why? I have done, actually, I haven't done any dom meets with heterosexual couples, but I have done um, escort meets. Um, I don't do them anymore because I had a couple show up. It was their first time ever doing anything like that. And it was very awkward. And I had to kind of keep the conversation going. And it was actually the girl's idea. She always wanted to be with a girl, which made me really excited as well. Because I was like, ooh, I'm bisexual. She was beautiful. So she was a little too nervous to start. And the guy was like, let's do this. So I started hooking up with the guy and she freaked and was like freaking out at him and me. How could you kiss her? I thought you loved me. And he was like, babe, we, we planned this. What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, but I didn't think you'd, you would actually do it. Next thing I know, I'm just awkwardly standing as they like sitting there as they're having this argument and they ended up just leaving. Um, I still obviously kept the money because they were still paying there and, um, after that, I kind of was like, I'd never want to go through that situation again. So the only way I will see um, a heterosexual couple is if they have done it before. Um, and I can tell if they're lying. So don't try and lie to me. Um, if, so yeah, I do prefer just doing kind of like solo meets. 
I prefer meeting solo guys. Um, it's kind of faster, and I don't know, it's just, I can be more of like, when I'm with a girl, I'm more of the dominant role, so with guys, it's nice because I can be more relaxed, and obviously when I'm doming, I'm, I'm a dom, but when I'm escorting, I'm not a sub, but I like to still be the female in the situation, if that makes any sense, so it's really hard for me to overlap the two, so yeah, I prefer not doing couples. Um, somebody asked, do I want kids? Yes, I want kids. Actually, being a mother is probably one of the most important things to me, believe it or not. And I can't wait to have kids. I can, but I can't. Hence, I got a dog. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I can't wait to have kids. I was always working with kids, whether daycare or, um, I worked in a preschool when I was younger. Um, I was always a babysitter or nanny or something like that when I was younger as well. Now, I can't decide. I was going to do, like, stuff on the bottom here. Eh, fuck it, I'll do it, whatever. 